This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. In the Exchange 2013 with Service Pack 1 training, Administration Basics, we went over what internal versus external DNS was. We talked about A records, MX records, all of that. So if you're not familiar with that, please go back and see that training. In this training, we're getting into the specifics and more advanced topics. So when it comes to DNS and email delivery, there are really two sides of this. There's the actual functionality of getting the email from one mail server to another mail server, and then there's getting the email into the user's inbox as opposed to being marked as spam or junk. So the records that are important for actual email delivery, so the functional part of getting an email from the source mail server to the destination mail server are A records and MX records. Records that help get the email into the user's inbox as opposed to being marked as spam are SPF, DKIM records, and also reverse lookup records, so our pointer records. Now there's also going to be multiple DNS servers we're going to be working with here. We've got our internal DNS server down here that's on our local area network. We've got our external DNS server out on the internet for ITDVDs.com. We also may be working with our ISP, or Internet Service Providers, DNS server in order to create reverse DNS records or pointer records. And initially we're going to set this up as if our Exchange server here, Exchange 01, that's going to have our mailbox server role and our client access server role, this is actually going to be the do the sending and receiving of email from the Internet. So when another mail server sends an email to... Some, like Joe at ITDVDs.com, it's going to be sent through the internet, go through our firewall, and go to our Exchange server directly. Now, in the real world, we're probably going to want to have some sort of third-party mail relay or an Exchange Edge Transport server that actually does the receiving of the email. That way it can do some spam checking, some virus checking, things like that. And we're going to see how to configure that later on and also how that changes how our external DNS looks a little bit. But some setups will have the mail going directly to our Exchange server, and the Exchange server will send the mail out to the Internet itself as opposed to relaying it to a third-party uh, mail relay or an edge transport server and then having that edge transport server send the mail off to the Internet. We're also going to be working with both IP version 4 and IP version 6 here. Hopefully you've gotten started with IP version 6 on your company's network. Uh, there is a possibility not, though. A lot of companies haven't started implementing it yet. And if that's the case, then you'll just be working with the IP version 4 records. If you're pretty new to IP version 6 and you want to learn more about it, please see the Cisco CCNA training on ITDVDs.com. We go in depth into IP version 6. Now there are multiple network setups and configurations. There's no one right answer for configuring and setting up your network. Most of the time we're going to have a firewall that separates our internal network from the internet. And with IP version 4, we're going to have external IP addresses that get translated, NAT stands for Network Address Translation, gets translated to an internal IP address. So when we're working with our external DNS records, we're going to have an external IP address. And that IP address, when a packet or email goes to it, is going to hit the firewall. It's going to be translated to 192.168.6.106 in our case, and then be sent to our Exchange server. Now our external IP addresses, most of the time we're either going to get them from our Internet Service Provider or our Colo if we're in a data center. If we have a larger company, we may actually uh, register and maintain our own IP block of external IP addresses, both for IP version 4 and IP version 6. Now, with IP version 4, we would have had to have been a, a pretty large company in order to have our own IP block that we manage and handle the routing for. With IP version 6, we can be a smaller company and have our own uh, IP version 6 block, and there are advantages to that because we are actually putting the external IP addresses on our internal servers and if we change ISPs or something like that then we have to re-IP our internal servers because our IP version 6 block is going to change. 
with IP version 4, if that happened and our external IP addresses change it, normally we would just change the NAT, the NATs on the firewall. So we wouldn't have to change all of the IP addresses on our internal network because those all had internal IP addresses. So that's just a quick note if you're you're looking to get your company set up with IP version 6.